some good news for once, I think. The Senate Banking Committee held hearings yesterday centered around student loan servicers, particularly the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority, known as MOHALA. Elizabeth Warren is the committee chair. She does good work in this area and has made student loan debt pretty central to her time uh, in the Senate over the past few years, was a part of pressuring the Biden administration to act on student loan debt. Um, and as you, as you know, I'm sure by now, his efforts to uh, cancel $10,000 uh, for people making less than 125K, up to $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients, that was overturned by the Supreme Court. And Mohela, this Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority, was involved in that case. You might remember from last summer, the state of Missouri was one of the plaintiffs saying that they were harmed by student loan cancellation. Uh, in Biden v. Nebraska. And the parasite bureaucracy. Yeah. And and what was amazing about this, too, and, and what just goes to show how much of a joke this the Supreme Court is, is that Mohela, that organization, even though they're extremely unethical, as you're, you're going to see in this in a bit, they were they, they didn't feel that they were harmed by student debt cancellation, even though Missouri claimed that they were that this would affect their ability to repay the state because Mohela is a quasi state agency. It basically acts as a student loan servicer, as a company, but it has these ties to the state. Missouri made this claim on their behalf, saying that they were going to be harmed financially. And that was why there was standing to claim that student debt cancellation would be in some way um, harmful financially to their interests. Um, but all of these independent reports, analysis, even, you know, indications from Mohalo themselves show that they were probably actually going to gain financially from student debt cancellation because it had something to do with certain liabilities going away from Mohala. All that being said, they're back in the news because this, the at issue here were their failures surrounding the return to repayment following the student uh, debt payment moratorium in the pandemic. And um, as you'll hear in this testimony here, they were engaging in practices where they clearly didn't value <laughs> the um, material realities of the borrowers. They were uh, funneling them into kind of automated systems, sending them incorrect balances to millions of borrowers who relied on them to be the middleman uh, for like this incredibly financially precarious situation for so many people in this country. And it's just another example of like these parasitic middlemen in this economy that we've created, um, exploiting people and not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so this is Persis Yu. She is a, uh, a part of the Student Borrower Protection Center. And she talks about this report that just came out about um, Mohela and the issues uh, uh, surrounding the student loan, loan servicer, but it's not just Mohela as a boogeyman. Obviously, this is a broader problem. So much better for it. Earlier this week, the president unveiled further details of his plans to enact debt relief using authority under the Higher Education Act, which could benefit 30 million borrowers. But we know that this unprecedented progress and momentum is gravely threatened by the same servicers that get paid hundreds of millions of dollars to help borrowers manage their payments. The Student Borrower Protection Center and the AFT put out a report we call the Mohila Papers, which uncovers evidence from a years-long investigation into Mohila, the primary servicer responsible for the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, and the same servicer that was central in the Supreme Court case that robbed 40-plus million borrowers of debt relief. We found that at a time when tens of millions of borrowers are stretching their budgets and struggling to navigate a complicated and changing student loan system, more than four in 10 Mohila customers experienced a servicing failure. Instead of performing basic servicing functions, such as providing borrowers with access to correct and timely information, Mohila chose a complex call deflection scheme, a Byzantine loop, 
of misinformation and false promises. As a sole servicer administering the PSLF program, Mohila's servicing failures particularly harm public service workers and prevent them from getting relief. Most recent federal records show that under Mohila, the backlog of unprocessed forms grew, exceeding at points 1.2 million forms and persisting for several reporting periods at more than 800,000 forms. Public service workers with eligible employment are getting denied. Mohila sent incorrect bills to more than a quarter of a million borrowers and failed to send bills at all to more than two million borrowers, pushing 800,000 borrowers into delinquency. The call deflection scheme diverts borrowers away from customer service representatives, often to non-operative parts of Mohila's website. Many of the servicing functions borrowers reach out for can only be performed by a live person. For low-income borrowers, this could be the difference between hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars over this next year. Amidst a time of unprecedented confusion and uncertainty, millions of borrowers reached out only to be led astray. Today, you will hear from industry lobbyists paid to offer spin, point fingers, and attempt to shield Mohila from public scrutiny. They will claim they do not have sufficient resources. But since the pandemic started, Mohila tripled the size of its portfolio. Make no mistake, Mohila made choices and must be held accountable for them. But Mohila is just the latest bad actor. Borrower advocates, federal and state regulators, law enforcement officials, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau have all documented a history of servicing misconduct and widespread failures across the industry. These failures create obstacles to repayment, raise costs, cause distress, and drive borrowers to default. The department has taken some actions to hold Mohila accountable. However, these actions fail to provide full and adequate remedy to those borrowers who have been harmed. And critically, they do not hold the company's executives accountable. Several states have consumer protection laws that should prevent unfair and deceptive practices, but servicers, Mohila included, often attempt to evade accountability by asserting that these laws don't apply to them claiming consumer protections are preempted by the Higher Education Act and they are shielded from liability through sovereign immunity. Today's hearing is an opportunity to hold Mohila accountable. And while Mohila CEO could not muster the courage to appear before you today publicly, I point your attention to the borrowers in this room, at this table and right behind me. These borrowers have taken time out of their busy lives, traveled away from their families to be here in hopes that this body will believe their lived experiences and bring an end to Mohila's cycle of scandal, deception, and borrower abuse. It is time to cancel student debt. It is time to make college free. And it is time to fire Mohila. Thank you. So well said. Uh, her testimony there, I thought, very succinctly explains um, exactly w why, I mean, these student loan servicers are such vampires but in particular why i think mohila is at the center for some of these activists and i saw the debt collective make this point which is that the standing that i referred to earlier in the supreme court case it was a joke on its face obviously because of the fact that mohila actually stood to benefit financially from student debt cancellation but the reason that they were even able to make that threadbare argument is because of the semi quasi state governmental entity status that mohila possesses so the debt collective and others are urging biden to terminate contracts with mohila because then future lawsuits surrounding the student debt cancellation would not be able to rely on that same standing claiming that these student this particular student debt organization servicer or um student loan servicer i should say is in some way a government entity where you can claim um standing here so this is the an an attempt to pressure the biden administration to terminate these kinds of contracts because then once you see the reality and these private completely private student loan servicers are put in the headlights um or put in the spotlight i think uh yeah put in the spotlight that's better then you're able to, to kind of isolate them too what 
I'd like to see him in between two headlights too, but um, <laughs> yes. um, I mean, this industry grinds people down and I think that testimony like got close, but I don't think like a lot of the elite politicians understand, especially people from low incomes, how this industry has grinds people down by the, I mean, millions with this sort of Kafka S B S about, okay, what, how do I even um, get in the right sort of plan repay back plan for me? Am I actually getting any sort of human engagement here? And then to the extent that it breaks people uh, through it, people suffer through it in shame in silence. And so like that, the debt collective and people like this are bringing, are speaking for those people. I mean, one, it shows just how massive this problem is. Mm -hmm. And again, like I, I, I just, it's it's long past time because the longer that we tolerate these half measures with the idea that this sort of student loan is a concept that should not exist. Yeah. No bankers should, or, or financiers should be taking a cut on people getting an education. It's sick that we allow that to be like just a natural part of education in the society. Literally rich people get an interest on poor people educating themselves. How are we allowing that? And it's driving up the price of colleges broadly. I saw that Vanderbilt University might might reach a hundred thousand dollars a year in ter- intuition um and this gate keeps these elite institutions for already existing wealthy people and so it completely and furthers. if you're not wealthy you're gonna have to pay you're gonna have to like you know pound of flesh um to these behemoth organizations and you're gonna be paying that the entire c- career and it's not just pound of flesh too it's also you're selling your future prospects and your future like, say you're 18 and you take out these student loans so you can go to Vanderbilt, $100,000 a year, you're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt <clears throat> when you graduate. What are you going to do? Are you going to go work and be a teacher or a professor? No. Or somebody that works for a nonprofit? I work for Chevron. You're going to work at the highest, you, I mean, and that is the point. That is the point. So Exactly. It, they, they win-win. It protects uh, these institutions and makes them... Parasites get to feed off it and corporations get their workforce. Yep. It, it make it, it furthers wealth inequality for people who can afford it. Um, it gatekeeps for the rest of the of society, and then for people that go into debt to be a part of those institutions, it funnels those peoples into the into useful those people into useful positions for capitalism.